and welcome to Dojo Live. It is Kim Lantis here at GVTA 2024. Joining me is CIO of Fox World Travel, uh, Sam Hilgendorf. So good to see you, Sam. A pleasure. It's great to be here this year. Yes, it, it's really fun. So before we dive into GVTA, we'd like to get to know you a bit more. Can you share a bit about your background, your experience, and what led up to your time with Fox World Travel? Yeah, sure. So I'm still a relative newcomer to, to travel been in travel for uh, just under six years. Mm -hmm. uh, joined as a uh, Fox's CIO back in 2018. Uh, prior to that, spent about 20 years in IT consulting. Uh, okay. So I got to see really amazing industry changes uh, across every type of industry out there, from manufacturing to healthcare, uh, to you know life sciences, to finance, everybody going through massive change. So you know one of the things that excites me the most about travel is well, travel's a little overdue for some of that change. <laughs> Uh, so it's, it's great to be kind of right now in the mix with everything from NDC to AI to, you know, uh, data and personalization that's all being worked on right now. Perfect. Now, six years of travel, it's not that long of a time. And you came in 2018, which was quite, quite wild, not too long before 2020. So trial by fire. <laughs> just a bit. Just a bit. By the time I actually understood an acronym, we had a worldwide <laughs> pandemic that shut everything down. Uh, so yeah, it was a better part of two years of, of really what was a master's class in crisis management. So, you know, regardless of travel, it's like, what can you do when, when you know, business literally stops? You know, you have to keep your, your organization in shape, keep your people, you know, motivated, excited, you know, all the things while, you know, really nobody knew what the future was going to hold at that point. Nobody. And so let's just talk a little bit. We made it. We're here. It's 2024 mm -hmm. GBTA. We're excited. You know, Fox World Travel has a booth. I got to see it last night at yep. the welcome party. Well, let's talk more about you. What makes you different from other yeah. TMCs? So at the end of the day, I mean, we really believe customers should expect a lot more from their travel management companies. Uh, and, and what I mean by that is, it, you know, it's the old Henry Ford um, quote, you know, you can have any color you want as long as it's black. <laughs> That's the travel management industry these days. And, and that drives us nuts. We, we really want customers to... We'll expect more of us, expect more from, from everybody within the industry. So for us, that means things like, you know, really finding out what they do differently and how do we customize what we deliver in, in order to, to meet those needs. I mean, mm -hmm. we've done things like incorporated Greyhound bus into uh, booking channels. We've in, uh, created fleet management sol solutions. We've done things with, you know, group air management for, for customers because they had unique business requirements that really, you know, we're exciting. And it's like, hey, you know what? You should expect more from, from who you're working with. Uh, go ahead. No, I think that's, that's great. I, you know, you mentioned this travel hospitality. It's time for some change. Technology plays a role in that. Now, I know that you've brought in quite a few different cutting edge elements to, to Fox Travel. You've got the enterprise data management, cloud collaboration. Um, what else have you done under your stewardship? Those have been some of the, the biggest things. We, you know, just are wrapping up our uh, point of sale migration to Travelport Plus. Uh, started this about two years ago uh, with wow. really the idea of that this is going to be the platform to to innovate off of for the next several years. Uh, you know, give us contact content into NBC, allow for some of the additional personalization that we're really really after for those those travelers that we want to create for them. Uh, so that's one of the biggest things. And then AI. Th this stuff is going to change how we all work. Um, you know, everything from how we research to how we write, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. how we communicate, all of that is going to be so different for, for all of us. So being able to bring in some of that already uh, and just seeing our agents engage with AI and learn really some of the skills to, to use it yeah. is really a lot of fun right now. That's, that's a big word. We saw that a lot. We see that a lot all the time on Dojo Live. We've got an entire series dedicated to it. It was a, a hot word, hot topic everywhere at High Tech mm -hmm. a couple weeks ago. One of the things about AI is to let, not let it be scary, Yep. right? And I think just you bringing up your agents and everybody kind of just getting used to it, playing with it a little bit every day. Yep. How else are you incorporating AI? So so really there's two sides uh, that, that I see. The, the first is what, what we call the commodity side, which is okay. it's like what ChatGPT has brought, where it's accessible to everybody at any time. You know, they can do their own research, have the, the access to the World Wide Web, but in a, such a different way, which it feels friendly, it feels supportive. Uh, and, and that's what we saw with our agents. As they first engaged with it, they, they felt comfortable. They're like, hey, it's, it's understanding what my interests are, what I'm after, and I'm getting outputs that 
that match that. So once they cross that threshold, now they're not scared of, of AI at all. They're like, hey, what can this do next? Give me more. <laughs> uh, so you know, we're talking about things of you know, how do we have it help with reporting and front ending okay. some of that yeah. stuff? How do we use it with policies? All these other things that make Fox unique, you know, starting to tie that, that AI capability into those as well. That's, that's amazing. Now, I'm, I'm wondering, you know, with the AI, your cloud solutions, what sort of happened to prompt this for you? What do you see in the industry, even before you came in to the industry, yeah. it was new for you? And what sort of advice might you have for other people in the industry as CIOs, CTOs, you know, the COOs? Those right. Uh, so, so on the first part, kind of what prompted the, the AI stuff was really what it, when ChatGPT hit. Um, you know, just some playing around with it. I mean, I remember a, a point in my office, you know, my CEO was standing next to me and we were just asking questions. And we both were like, oh my gosh, this, this, is, amazing. this is amazing. I've used it to yep. help with my kindergartner's homework. Yep. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, my 12-year-old lives on the stuff. Uh, and and it's, it's great to see how... Again, she's adapting. Her, yeah. her language skills are off the chart because how much she engages with, with AI and is you know, understanding the words better, understanding the, the intent better, things like that. So that was really one of the, the kind of initiations of, of where we started on the path of, all right, how do we get this now into the hands of, of more people uh, than just, just the two of us? You know, for, when it comes to recommendations for uh, you know, leaders and, and to, mm -hmm. to kind of figure out what some of those next things are, it's a few areas. The first is getting in front of customers, and, and honestly, it's showing the vulnerability that you don't have to have all the answers, but getting them into the art of the possible conversations, yeah. getting them to the, well, what if, uh, if this could happen? And, and that's, I think it's a tough place for a lot of execs to go because you kind of have to, you feel like you have to have the answer. But so much of the art of the possible is not having answers, yeah. it's asking the questions. And it comes back to the user itself. And it absolutely it's all about does. You, right? it's, it doesn't matter what tech I have if it doesn't work exactly. for you or it isn't what you need. Right. So, so it's one of the things I, I love about Fox is we get in front of customers all the time at all different levels. So I'll have a developer who, you know, stereotypically are the guys in the back room that you slide pizza under the door with <laughs> and, and let them let them go. Like well, no. <laughs> right. But no, bring them in front of a customer because then they understand what they're building. Yep. They understand what the customer's, you know, desires and their outcomes are. And it's a whole different level of, of creativity that kind of comes out from them. Um, so the other place I'd say is is its peers, and its peers outside of the industry, uh, which is another place you have to show some vulnerability. You've got to be willing to say, hey, I don't have all the answers. I really want to know how you did this, <laughs> how you solved these types of problems. Other industries have already gone through a lot of the change yeah. that we're dealing with. Those are those peers that, hey, we'll have <laughs> insights and ideas for you. I love it. The, the peer to peer, regardless of industry, technology is amazing, mm -hmm. and it's going to take us places. Any other kind of words of wisdom that you'd like to share with the audience? Uh, you know, the the biggest is don't let this is the way it's always worked be the stop. You know, and every industry goes through that. But I swear, travel uses it as a badge of honor. It's like, <laughs> no, we know better. This is the way it's always always uh, worked. And, and I think that's what's led to some of this, you know, place that we're at today, where the, the legacy is pushing yeah. up against, you know, the the opportunity that's out there. And a lot of the conversation around NDC is really that. It's around mm -hmm. legacy technologies versus art of the possible. Yep. And how does it actually come together? Yeah, and even with the keynote last night, or the main stage speaker, he was talking about making the, vis the invisible visible. Yep. Right? And I think that's, that's really cool, to yeah. having that show what's working and why it's working and how it's working. And yeah, I guess one final word or question to Riley, really. First one is the future of business travel and business travel technology. We already covered AI, but what would you think the future of business travel is yeah. in one word? Change. It's going to change a lot over the next several years. I mean, the, the AI is going to bring the level of change that the internet brought, and it is going to change how we all work and how we all think. Uh, that's going to impact travel. Perfect. Thank you so much. And Sam, if people want to get a hold of you or learn more about Fox World Travel, how do yeah. they go about doing that? So the easiest way is uh, www.foxworldtravel.com, how to, to find us and learn more about Fox. Uh, as for me, you can find me on LinkedIn. Fortunately, there's not a whole lot of Sam Hilgendorfs around. <laughs> uh, so if you find a Sam at Fox World Travel, that's probably me. All right. Thank you so much for your time today, Sam. Have a wonderful GBTA 2024. You as well. Thank you. Bye for now.